watching me through Roby because I'm too lazy to open OBS and I have skill issues. But anyway, so Roby's been working on a mushroom farm, which is over there, and it needed a sort of a long and very specific delayed clock of 2037 game ticks. And he asked me for help. And because I like binary counters, I was like, well, we can use a binary counter, right? Completely ignoring that a uh, that 20, 20 plus 7 is in fact not a multiple of 2. Or in fact very close to a multiple of 2. Well, I mean it is, it's close to 2048 but it's below it. And so the closest multiple of 2 really in terms of a binary counter is 1024 and it, it gets messy. So we, we don't want to do that. Like it, it just, it's not nice for our purposes here. But Roby then noticed that 2037 has only three prime factors, which are all quite small. You've got a 3, a 7, and a 97. And, well, so it's also, so it's 21 times 97 yep. gives you 2037. And that means, and because those numbers are co-prime, we can take two clocks that have those periods and run them next to each other, and every 2037 game pick they will both fire at the same time. And that's what we've done here with these things. We've just connected both of them with an AND gate. So, and we've wired it in such a way that it produces an output when it first fires. As you see, you've got the tick number ending in 669 or 669. Yeah. Then if we and then tick warp the uh, game ticks, you'll see it will fire again on whatever. 8706, yeah, that, that's the right number. And I can do it again, and it will fire again after another 2000 game tick, or another 2007 game tick. Right there. Yeah. Which is easier to see than if it's by 2007. And so that's one good. I mean, the AND gate that we're using is a bit specific because we need it to only trigger on inputs on the exact same game tick. And this is a design I had from years ago, from when I needed this for another project, which was actually for detecting stuff happening in the world on specific ticks, but whatever. And it relies on the fact that these two buds will only ever cut the dust on cut both of these dust lines if they fire on the same tick. And the buds are just um, this, which is a comparator on not the Rudolph mode, if you're on the Rudolph mode, it doesn't, Rudolph mode, this doesn't work, where the app doesn't do anything, but this, it sends one update. And because it only sends one update, the block doesn't drop, compared to just having the observer here where it would drop. Oh, and turning it off of Rudolph mode, it also fires, because reason, Mojang. But yeah. this is a very useful thing. I like using it a lot because if you use it's an observer, remarkably stable. then uh, shit happens usually. This, and yeah. you don't want that to happen. And it's just not great. Yeah. It just goes wrong, and we don't want it to go wrong. And the clock modules are these. And that should be off. Yeah, it's, so with the push limit, yeah, or better first. say the pull limit, in this case, six blocks, so six repeaters is the maximum. So if you turn on this clock, then you would see this post the redstone block and it turns on and the piston extending, so these two pistons cause the five game tick delay, which makes it uneven, which is uh, very good for the co-primes. If you have even numbers in two clocks, uh, it very often happens, for example, if you have a four game tick and a six game tick clock, they already match after 12 game ticks, which is not the product of the two numbers, which would be 24. So it's only half as efficient. Sometimes you might want that and it's useful to you, but in most cases you want uh, something prime or at least uneven in regards to numbers. And uh, since this is turning on and off, each repeater tick you add here adds four game ticks instead of the usual two because it's two game ticks turning off and then two when turning on again. And in this case, this is the 97 game tick clock. If you add one more, there would be plus four game ticks, so that's 101. Coming from 48 game ticks times two for on and off, that's 96, and then you add the five from this clock, and that's 101. 
if you need more than um, this, then uh, there's oh, a wiring I example. Mentioned actually, uh, she also mentioned that this is only actually limited by because you because we have the observer on it to take the output. If you didn't have the observer, you could add another repeater because the slime bar is at ten, not eleven. Yeah, but the if slime bar is at eleven. Was more the than the ten? Uh, no, it's six or yeah, seven yeah. in that case. If you don't have an observer, you can wire them. Where well, you yeah, could add it here on this one to just go on a circle like this, but that's kind of bad, so you might as well wire it in a way that's not using slime anymore. These can be yeah, you, you just any length. You at the end gate. Yeah, you, you effectively are you're effectively just making a comparator clock, but you're replacing sort of the bit going inside the comparator with this thing, like the two pistons, to get yeah. an old delay, and it's better. Yeah. And this works with more clocks, obviously, because provided like they're all co-prime, i.e. they all have a greatest common divisor of one, it will still, their least common multiple, which is the period of the combined clock, will always be their product. So here we've got a clock of 17, 21, and 25. And if we power them, you'll see one nine 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 and then we walk for nine thousand game ticks. And what once it finishes warping after a while because the server's a bit laggy, you'll see that the period is eight thousand nine hundred and twenty five game ticks, which is the product of these three clocks, like the periods of them. And that is and in fact you can continue this pattern on for quite a while adding on four game ticks until you run out of size on these clocks. But by that time, your period is well over the length of the universe. Like, the universe will die before that finishes. Because the next one, because every four game ticks you add on, i.e. the next slowest one of these clocks, is not, is yeah, it's going to um, be co-primed to all the other numbers. Well, it's not, but it, basically it, it, it it just works, TM. You yeah. can just keep on adding these and it as long as really big, really fast. As long as the, uh, in this case, we always add four game ticks, so one repeater tick on and off, and as long as the starting number and the delay you increase between of them as a greatest common denominator of one, it works. So none of them share a factor, and in this case, it grows kind of like factorial, but not quite, so it's faster than uh, normal exponential growth, like the binary counter. Yeah, so uh, the, bi yeah, the binary counter grows in explicitly polynomial yeah, time. It's, it's polynomial some constant time. for your clock. Some constant for your clock times uh, two to the clock size. And this grows in super polynomial time, which means that once you get to enough stackings of this, the growth rate just blows up in comparison to polynomial. But it's still slower than factorial time. Yeah, that's like one of the fastest you could make. So well, in this in case, terms of stuff if you time. add one more, it's something like 260k, and then if you add one more, I think it's 31.6 million yeah. game ticks, so it's yeah. crazy long for just adding five modules. Yeah, and then and it just gets silly. Like, it just gets silly really fast. Yeah, but I the think anything more than five yeah, modules so is longer than you will ever play. Yeah, and the main usage, though, is not really making super long clocks. I mean, I guess it is, but that's just sort of an esoteric exercise. If you, The actual good thing about this is that provided your like clock period is non-prime and has reasonably okay factors that you can make into clocks, you can turn one quite long timer, like you can turn your whatever 90,000 game tick timer into three smaller timers that are synced to each other. Yes, and the and very nice thing is you can oh. instantly turn it off again. So if I turn this one off, it turns all these pistons on, and that happens pretty much instantly. All you need to wait yep. for to turn it on again would be till the last redstone block, this repeater turned off. That's basically the cooldown of turning it on and off, which is uh, yeah, pretty um, much nothing. Yeah, yeah, 
yeah, it, it is effectively knocking in the grand scheme of how long we've got from guy. Compared to, for example, a hopper clock, which needs to feed all the items back, this is much faster to turn on yeah. and off. And even if you don't wait till this turns off again, you can still turn it on and off quickly. It won't break. All that happens is you won't sync it up again. So in the worst case, the last one is still going and powered for some time. And then it just starts going. The cycle starts later than when you plan on by turning it on. Yeah, like it... And the cycle will still be the same length. So you'll just start at a random point. So rather than having your thick zero delay at the start, you'll have something between one and the cycle length delay before the first output, which maybe you want in some world, but there are better ways to generate random numbers, if I'm honest with you. Yeah. Um, really, having it be consistent is very nice because it lets you use it as a resettable timer. And I think that's it. Yeah, yeah, that's all really. I mean, I don't think I need to provide schematics. This is all sort of quite simple redstone, really, isn't it? Yeah, it's you can see lines most of, of the circuit. Inside. Yeah, you can see every you can see every component in here. If you can't put it together, then ask that's in the you not comments. Ask. Since it's not my yeah, channel. I'll ask in the comments. <laughs> I will. Uh, I I I won't be too mean. Okay. Bye bye. Bye.